Hi, welcome to part number two of my pedal board rundown videos here. We're going to move on to the squishy world of the Fairfield Circuitry Accountant Compressor today. Uh, this is a relatively new pedal for me. I've had it maybe a year or so. Uh, I absolutely love this pedal. I've wanted the sound of a very squashed compressor on my board as an effect for a long time. Uh, this one fit the bill perfectly. It sounds great, it's versatile, and it's tiny, as you can see, which my board is pretty cramped, um, and so space is always a concern. Anyway, let's jump into it. So this shouldn't be too long of a video. There's not a whole lot for me to do with combinations with other pedals like there was in the OC2 video. So it's going to be more just kind of showing how I use the compressor. Um, so this only has three controls, volume, ratio, and pad. Um, the pad is essentially kind of like a threshold control on other compressors. So let's start with very mild compression. Um, and I'm going to put the ratio on zero and the pad on zero. Here's my dry signal of my Dingwall ABZ 6-string. Okay, so turning on the Fairfield here. Yet again, this is ratio at zero, pad at zero. And you can hear that with my bass, which has relatively low output, when the pad is this low with this low of a ratio, you barely even can tell that the compressor's on. So if you're going for a really subtle, transparent, always on kind of compressor, this might work really well for you. This is not at all what I use it for though. So let's kick the pad up to two, which is the highest pad setting. Basically I'm hitting the wall of the compressor a little bit harder. Um, of course, when I turn the volume up on the, the input gain up with the pad, I need to turn the volume down if I want it to match my dry volume. So here's my dry. <laughs> Still a little bit boosted, but that's okay. So, lowest ratio, highest pad. So, nice subtle compression here. You definitely can hear the compressor, the compressor's kind of pumping effect going on. Here's that same sound, ratio zero, pad at two, but with a pick. probably can hear a little bit of breakup, which is actually one of the reasons I like this compressor. I like the color that it imparts. Um, when you hit the wall of the compressor, it actually does have a little bit of grit. Uh, so it works pretty well as kind of a solo boost, um, which I'll get into here in a little bit. Okay, let's go to the more extreme settings here. Let's kick the ratio to two. Um, this is closer to limiting. I think it's 16 to one or 20 to one. I'd have to look at the manual to be sure. But let's put the pad at zero. So the highest ratio, but still the lowest pad setting. Dry, compressor, okay, good, that's about there. Now if I play soft, you're not gonna hear too much going on. But if I hit the note hard, you'll hear a really strong pop, which is essentially just me hitting the wall of the compressor and it pushing my signal down really quick. It's more noticeable with a pick. This might be useful if you want to get some kind of peak limiting thing going on. I personally think it's cooler sounding to kick the pad all the way up and get this incredibly extreme uh, limiting kind of pumping effect going on here where every note has that loud pop to it. Yet again, you can hear that breakup. This sounds awesome through a PA. You get like that kind of kick in the chest every time the compressor gets hit. Um, same settings, a ratio at two, pad at two, but with a little bit of a slap groove. So without the uh, compressor on here. setting here, high, high setting on the compressor. Cool. Okay, so 
I've kind of shown this subtle, uh, the subtle sides of the fair field and then the extreme side, and now I'll go to the setting that I actually use the most, which is ratio at one, and then the pad also at one. This seems to work the best to get a balance between a noticeable compressor effect, which is why I like it. Yet again, I'm not trying to get a um, always-on transparent compressor here. My goal is actually to have a noticeable compressed sound, because I like that tone, but not have it be so squished that um, I'm losing note definition and stuff like that. So ratio at one, pad at one, um, a little bit of volume boost because I kind of use it like a boost. So here's my dry volume. Here's with the compressor. So a little bit of a boost there. And you'll hear that it's just a nice balance in between, at least in my opinion, from what I do. With the compressor. Okay. Um, a little slap groove, so without the compressor. Cool. Um, something else that this setting does that I like is it does do a little bit of line leveling. So if I'm doing something where um, I want it to sound a little bit more cohesive, like chordal work, or especially if I'm doing harmonics stuff, it'll kind of balance out the real notes of the harmonics. So here's without the compressor, just a harmonic chord. <laughs> Same four chords, but with the Fairfield on. Cool. Um, yet again, you can hear just that subtle bit of breakup, which I really like. Um, some people might not like that at all, but for me, I, I like the color that it imparts. Uh, with the same idea in mind of that little bit of breakup, I, I, do I do use this for soloing and melody lines sometimes. So without the compressor on, I'm adding a little bit of reverb from the TC Electronics Hall of Fame up in the corner there, but a little bit of just kind of the higher end of my bass. <laughs> that setting quite a bit actually I almost use this sometimes kind of treating it as if it's a low gain overdrive boost um, if I really don't want too much grit on there uh, the one other setting that I really like that I'll show you is actually using the OC2 um, in a traditional octaver setting and if you want to see more about this check out my OC2 review so here's the OC2 um, with a pick kind of on its own <laughs> like Sledgehammer, for instance. Just that really tight kind of percussive octave crunch. Anyway, that's basically how I use the Fairfield. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what the different soundings, uh, the different settings sound like on bass. So if you like what you hear, please subscribe, and I will be back soon for more of these pedal reviews and demos, and uh, have a good day. <laughs>